Welcome to a review of Taylor's formula with remainder. And the goal of the video is to determine the error when approximating a function value with a Taylor polynomial. The idea behind Taylor's theorem is that the true function value would be equal to the Taylor polynomial approximation plus some remainder, which can also be considered the error between the actual function value and the Taylor polynomial. The function must be able to be differentiated n plus one times in an interval containing c. Remember c is where the Taylor polynomial is centered. And if that's the case, for each x in the interval, there must exist some k between x and c. So we can determine the remainder or error by using this formula here, which is equal to the n plus one derivative of f evaluated at k divided by n plus one factorial times x minus c to the power of n plus one. Now while this is good news, sometimes this function value here is very difficult to determine based upon the type of function that we have. So what we often have to do is take the absolute value of both sides of this equation and state that the absolute value of the remainder or error is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c to the n plus one power divided by n plus one factorial. But then instead of using the n plus one derivative of f evaluated at k, we have to think about what the maximum value of that function value would be since we're not able to determine the exact value of the given function. Let's go ahead and give it a try. In a previous video, we found the nth degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x equals cosine x to be as follows. So now we want to determine the error using the polynomial to estimate cosine of 0 0.1. Okay, so a couple of things to point out here. This is a Maclaurin polynomial, which means it's centered at x equals zero. So that means c is equal to zero. And then if we're trying to determine the error for cosine 0 0.1, that means x is going to equal 0 0.1. Since this is the fourth degree Taylor polynomial, we are going to have to find the fifth derivative of the given function. So let's start by doing that. The first derivative would be negative sine x. Second derivative would be negative cosine x. Third derivative would be equal to sine x. Fourth derivative would be equal to cosine x. And then finally the fifth derivative would be equal to negative sine x. So if we use this formula in its current form, we'd have r sub four of 0 0.1 would be equal to, this derivative here would be negative sine k. divided by four plus one factorial, or five factorial, times x minus c to the n plus one power. Well, x is 0 0.1 and c is zero, so we'd have 0 0.1 to the fifth power. Now the problem with this is we don't know what negative sine of k would be, but we do know that the sine function always returns a value between negative one and positive one where negative one would be the minimum and positive one would be the maximum. So instead of using the formula in this form, if we take the absolute value of the error, it would always have to be less than or equal to the maximum value of negative sine x would be positive one. So we we'll use one divided by five factorial times 0 0.1 to the fifth power. So again, we're not able to determine this exact function value but we do know that the maximum value would be positive one. And that way the absolute value of the error would always be less than or equal to this given value. So let's go ahead and go to our calculator and see what this gives us. So we have one divided by five factorial, so press five math over to probability, option four, press enter. And then we're gonna multiply this by 0.1 to the fifth. And so we can see here that the error is extremely small. This is 8.3 repeating times 10 to the negative eighth power. So if we wanted to rewrite this using decimal notation, this would be equal to point with seven zeros 
eight, three, repeating. So this tells us that using this Maclaurin polynomial to approximate the function value of cosine 0 0.1 is extremely accurate. Here we have a degree three Taylor polynomial centered at x equals zero for f of x equals e to the x. Now this is centered at x equals zero, so it could also be called the Maclaurin polynomial. Since it's centered at x equals zero, we know that c will equal zero. We want to determine the error when using this polynomial to estimate e to the zero point five, which means that x is equal to zero point five. Next, if we want to determine this error, we are going to have to find the n plus one derivative. So if this is a degree three Taylor polynomial, we do have to find the fourth derivative of f of x equals e to the x. Well, this function is its own derivative, so the fourth derivative would just be e to the x. So using this formula to determine the error, we'd have r sub three of x must equal the fourth derivative evaluated at this special k, so we'd have e to the k divided by n plus one factorial, that's four factorial, times x minus c to the fourth power, which would be 0 0.5 to the fourth. Now we're gonna have some difficulty determining e to the power of k. We know that k is somewhere in the interval from zero to 0 0.5, and since e to the x is increasing, e to the 0 0.5 would be the largest value for e to the k. However, we don't know that value. In fact, that's the value we're trying to determine using the Taylor polynomial. So we need to determine a different value that we can use for e to the k. So the absolute value of this error will always be less than or equal to some maximum value for e to the k divided by four factorial times 0 0.5 to the fourth. Well, let's talk about this maximum value for e to the k. On this interval, the maximum value would be e to the 0 0.5, which is the same as e to the one-half power, which is the same as the square root of e. Well, e is approximately 2.718, so we need to think of a different value that we can use that we could easily find the square root of. And four would work out very well because four to the 0 0.5 is equal to four to the one-half, which is equal to the square root of four. And we know that four is greater than e, so we could say that e to the 0 0.5 is less than two. So we'll use two for the maximum value of this fourth derivative on this given interval. That way the error will always be less than or equal to this value. So let's go ahead and determine what this value would be. So we have two divided by four factorial. And now we want to multiply this by 0 0.5 to the fourth. And so we have approximately 0 0.0052. So when using this Taylor polynomial to approximate e to the 0 0.5, the error will always be less than or equal to 0 0.0052. Again, showing this is a very good approximation to determine this function value. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.